tonight. Now, I want to bring in uh, somebody who's Thank wearing you, two Greg. hats for us. Uh, he's a member of Congress, but he also used to run emergency management uh, here in the state of Florida. So he knows the state really well, and he understands the politics local, but also on the federal level. Uh, Representative Jared Moskowitz, Democrat, Florida. Uh, Congressman, it's good to have you again tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris, and I appreciate going after Lieutenant Dan and Cash the donkey. I know I've now made it in life. Yeah, well, you know, you're third, but it could have been worse. Could have been worse. I also suffer potentially from donkey, donkey anxiety, by the way. I know. Yeah, you got a different kind of donkey anxiety about how close this presidential election is. Uh, and there is a lot of politics being played uh, w with it. But I want to start with, you know, what actually matters to people. Because we didn't expect the tornado event in the center and eastern part of your state, I was told today by local officials uh, that they don't know what this is going to mean in terms of resources and uh, efforts on the state and federal level because it wasn't really something they were anticipating. How does it work and what does it mean for the people in Florida? Well, yeah, obviously the fact that we had 126 tornado warnings, the most in Florida history, the second most in U.S. history after the 2011 Alabama tornado outbreak, 40 tornadoes on the ground potentially in Florida, also the most in history. And we have been talking in Florida emergency management, as Kevin Guthrie, the director, that these hurricanes can spawn tornadoes. We saw it in Ian, but nothing like what Milton did. And so, yeah, you had people on the East Coast that weren't even getting tropical storm force winds, but got these tornadoes in a couple of bands that, that went through. What it means is the geographic area now of the damage is bigger. It means you have more counties that are meeting their damage threshold. It means you had, you had rescue crews going out to East Coast, even though that we were maybe using those assets getting ready for the West Coast. It means that, you know, you have now residents that are going to be needing additional FEMA dollars, uh, obviously, whether that's SBA loans as well, uh, which, as we know, uh, there's not enough money in that fund. Uh, and so it's it's more resources in more places. And so it distrains the entire system even greater than the 10 or 15 or 20 counties we thought would happen between the west coast of Florida, central Florida, and then exiting out, you know, near Daytona Beach and Jacksonville. The fact that you have St. Mm. Lucie County nowhere near where the storm came in uh, having devastation uh, and will meet their damage threshold is just it, it. Milton will go down as the hat trick. We had storm surge. We had wind damage and we had tornadoes. We have not seen that before. And the season's not over yet, so we'll keep watching what's happening here. The compound effect is going to be really tough. There are going to be a lot of people hurting for a very long time. One last quick thing. What is your take on what to do when your opposition is spinning a lot of bull bleep about uh, FEMA or, you know, whether people can control the weather. I mean, really dumb stuff. You, you know, you responded to uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, the member of Congress, uh, making this stupid suggestion that Democrats can control the weather. Are you worried that by engaging and taking that stuff on, you're only amplifying the message? Chris, I think one of the things we've learned, unfortunately, in how communications works in this time and day is that you can't allow it to go unchallenged. You can't allow them to just be the only ones communicating. And if you don't respond, that and there's a vacuum left. And then people think it's true. And so, yeah, when Marjorie Taylor Greene says that we have a weather machine, I would like to know why Donald Trump didn't unplug the weather machine when he was president and why we had hurricanes when he was president. Why didn't he just make it, make it go away? Uh, and so, yeah, listen, we can't fix stupid, right? And we were talking about Lieutenant Dan. I mean, stupid is as stupid does. And we got Marjorie, and we're going to have to deal with her. But she's hurting a lot of people. There are a lot of people that are listening to government and to elected officials. Should I evacuate? Should I take my family? Should I take my pet? Should I go to a right, shelter? Right, that's different. Should I go to a friend's house? And if they don't trust when government says it's not safe for you to leave, they're going to stay, and they could potentially die based on what she's doing to institutions by saying we're creating all of this, right? There, the reason there's a hurricane in North Carolina, there's a silicone mine, or the reason this hurricane went to, we've never no, seen agree. a hurricane go to Tampa. I agree. I, I, I agree. I'm just saying you got to believe that anyone who's paying attention to Marjorie Taylor Greene and taking heed in her saying that there's such thing as a weather machine, you ain't going to get their votes anyway. And they're not yeah, going to no, be smart it's... enough to leave during a hurricane anyway. You no, know, a little Chris, bit but... of it is, you know, so there you can't save everybody, you know.
No, of course, but you know, we, we can't just allow that to go unchecked anymore. Democrats have been too much on the defensive, trying to explain things. It's time to go on the offense with that stuff. We got to take on the stupid and the misinformation. Watching what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing, and then you go watch the foreign accounts that are being manipulated by China and Russia, amplifying that to cause more confusion and more chaos yeah, here. Yeah, that's true. And get, you know, and, and so we that's can't true. we can't let we can't let the chairwoman of the Mensa caucus just get away with this. I know. Listen, I hear you, uh, Congressman Moskowitz. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, and thank hey, you thanks, for. Chris. Um, looking after your constituents and your fellow citizens down here in Florida. They're going to need our attention. They're going to need our help, and it's going to be for a long time. So we'll stay in touch. I'm always a phone call away if you want to come on to discuss the latest and what needs to be done and how politics are getting in the way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, all right.